Maybe I'm making the wrong kind of videos. Maybe I should start making TikTok videos for kids about Warhammer lore. Tell them all about the flayed ones. Uh, maybe not. Or maybe I need a video with Games Workshop in all caps in the title. Uh. Don't think that way, man. The change from shady businessman to creative crafter has been so positive for you. You've really enjoyed putting all your effort into these projects you've worked so long on and expressing yourself. It's a good thing your sentence is so long, because it's going to take years to find anyone that likes what you make. You should just give up now and accept your fate. And you've wet yourself. Prisoner, who are you talking to? Now that the voices are gone, in this episode of Half Crafted, I'm going to be cramming this flayed one into a paint pot. Don't feel too bad for him, he is a flesh-eating machine, he is mentally ill, and he should not be trusted. And all of that very much plays into the look that I'm going for here with this mini. But we'll talk about a little flayed one lore later. As far as plastic goes, these miniatures are notorious for being difficult to build. I quite enjoyed it, I found it a bit of a challenge, but there are so many fine, fiddly, delicate points on the sprue that make the models hard to get off, hard to clean up, and hard to glue together, because if you get plastic glue on any of the finer points, it's going to melt the plastic away and you're going to lose a lot of that detail. That said, these models are beautiful. They very elegantly sneak in gore, parts of draped flesh, and even body parts, without ruining the overall look of a Necron gone insane. Got to keep those nails looking good, nice and sharp. Everyone knows a good flayed one never misses a mani pedi. Cleaning up some of the finer sprue lines on the legs and arms to put these into position on the body. If I had to do this again, I would say before gluing the longest nail onto the hand, glue the arms in place on the body first, and this will allow you to position the nails after working with the rest of the model to avoid bending them or snapping them off. The instructions say the opposite of this, and I think it's best to ignore them in this case. You can't really see very well here, but I'm clipping off a piece of dangling flesh from the torso, and then I'm gluing the torso onto the body. I'm not sure if this is what Games Workshop intended when they made the Lead Belcher base paint. I don't think they thought it would actually be used as a base, but we're improvising here. To build up some volume inside the paint pot so our Necron isn't just hovering, I'm putting in a bit of tin foil with super glue. This took a few applications of super glue and baking soda to really stop it from moving around inside, but I got there eventually. So this miniature was made for the Paint Pot Challenge 2023, which is a contest run by Morose Miniatures on Instagram. The competition dictates that it has to still look like a paint pot, so to do that we're keeping the label on the front and I'm trimming off the edges. Now we have to fit the legs in. This took a bit more dry fitting and testing, moving a bit and testing again, because the legs have to be positioned inside the paint pot, which they're not initially modeled to do. I clipped away the right leg just above the knee joint and shaved it down so it was smooth. This allowed me to reposition it as I wanted. Tell me a thin was an absolute godsend here. It just makes it so much easier to apply only as much plastic glue as you need without having overflow, which then melts plastic you don't want melted. I want this paint pot to sort of look like a vent or silo coming out of the ground, and the best way I thought to make a, a base that suited that look was with hot glue. Cheap, easy and very satisfying to work with. I got this mini hot glue gun and a whole load of glue sticks from Poundland for, uh, oh, how much was it? Uh, hmm, I think it was a pound. And I'm sanding the exterior of the paint pot so glue adheres better to it. I wanted the appearance on the outside of some sort of emergency escape steps, and I think this staple gun did a pretty good job. It made it very easy to space them out, and they're very uniform. I did want them distanced a little bit more from the paint pot, so I tried to use these tweezers. It sort of had the effect on a couple, but I just ended up bending my tweezers. Next I used some nozzle bits from old plastic water guns to create a sort of pneumatic arm on the side. 
I was careful to position this beforehand because the two parts do have to line up and then once I had the position right I super glued it in place. Gave the flayed one a quick test fit to make sure nothing was getting in the way and then I looked around for some more bits to give this piece a bit more detail. I settled on this control pad and a cable made from old headphone wire connecting it to the pneumatic arm. Kit bashing is all about finding interesting shapes to fit together to break up the look that they shouldn't be together in the first place. If you think about it, that's how everything is built. It's just shapes built on shapes. Here I'm using a piece of a Necron Gorse weapon with some cables to just glue to the back to make it look more like a mechanical piece. And lastly, after much scouring of my bits box, I found a little piece of plastic that looks perfect as a hatch. Joy of Joy's painting. Now my painting isn't the best, and if you've watched my previous videos, you'll know that. We're starting out with the flayed one primed in grey. It doesn't matter though, because we're putting pure black from Vallejo straight on all over. This is watered down a little bit, but it doesn't need too much as a lot of Vallejo's paints are a bit thinner than Citadel paints. I'm using a large brush here to get it done as quickly as possible. Same goes for the paint pot here. This is Lead Belcher on a Lead Belcher paint pot, which is sort of messed up, really. Next, with a bit of torn up sponge, I'm stippling on red leather from Vallejo all over. We love a rust look here at Half Crafted. It's nice and easy to build up gradually, and if you make any mistakes, it's not too glaring. You can use a finger to wipe off any edges that you want to look less rusty. This is going on quite liberally and I'm even going on with quite a large brush into any of the recesses that I couldn't get to to make sure that they look grimy and rusty as well. Some cheap umber acrylic paint watered down goes around the hot glue and cork around the edge of the base. I probably should have done this later as it kept rubbing off on my hand. Two thin coats is an important step of painting any miniature. While the paint dries on the paint pot, I'm making sure to go in with a medium brush and get any spots on the flayed one that haven't been coated black. Hope you're not watching this at work. Some premium peel born. That was delightful. Now with the tape removed and the label exposed again, I'm mixing matte medium with a little bit of Troll Slayer Orange and using this to glaze over the label to make it look as dirty as the rest of the paint pot. I tried not to make this look uniform and add in some streaks. With that Troll Slayer Orange, we're taking a small sponge and stippling on bits of orange all the way around the rusted exterior. I'm trying to be as random with these placements as I can and slowly work around the outside, building up that patina rusted effect. Time to get in those juicy recesses. Optimal spill reduction as always at Half Crafted. This shade is going all over the model. We want to pick out any of those recesses all the way around to make it look even more grimy and dirty. Make sure this doesn't pull anywhere to create any stains, but if it does, it's not the end of the world as it can add to some of the dark areas of that patina. We're finally ready to put some paint on our flayed one boy and his fleshy adornments. I'll be using Screaming Skull here as a base for the fleshy parts. As with many whites, the pigment is very small in the paint, so it's best to just work up to get a solid base layer. This should take about two thin coats of paint, but don't be concerned if it takes one more. I confess that this is the first human toned skin I have painted. It's probably not the best practice for painting a space marine's face, but I did enjoy the process. If you would like to see me paint up some space marines and some orcs, then subscribe, like the video. Let me know in the comments what you'd like to see me paint next. While I've got the screaming skull out, I'm also picking out this skull on the control panel. Dirty Down Rust. Now I'm sure you've seen this product used a hundred times on a hundred channels by now because it really is great stuff. Observe the reckless abandon. I apply it to the paint pot with a large brush. It really 
isn't anything to be afraid of. It's water soluble. What that means is even though it dries incredibly quickly, it can be reactivated using water. I'm trying to apply this to spots that I think there would be a lot of rust building up, creating big streaks and stippling little bits on. Then I'm going in with a cotton bud dipped lightly in water and softening the edges by reactivating that dirty down and pulling it off. You could use dirty down by itself, but I think it pairs very well with the simple paint techniques that we've used underneath. This gives a very realistic effect and it's very easy to do. Back to our Necron boy, I'm using a wash to darken down the tone of the skin. It'll be lighter when it dries and it looks darker on camera really than it actually is. It is important here to make sure that none pulls and it's all pulled down in the direction you want for shading. While that dries, I'm applying some quick metallic spots to the control panel around the eye and on the buttons. It's nice having two different parts of a model to work on so you can let one part dry while you do something else. I also picked out the metal of the hydraulic arm to make it look like it had recently opened. Druhi Violet is a lovely shade which we'll be using to make the flesh on the flayed one look a bit more pallid and necrotic. This shade goes quite a long way to making the skin look less leathery and more like, well, more like it was recently acquired. Picking out just a couple of details now with AK Interactive Intense White. We're using this paint so that the paints we put over them pop really nicely. I'm doing both the eye on the flayed one and the eye on the controlled panel. First on the flayed one's eye, I've put down corn red, and I'm also picking out this cable on his tummy. Gushy gushy go! And yellow for the servo skull's eye. I'm also filling in the cable that runs up to the arm. This is going to be a hazard stripe pattern. I didn't actually use a yellow paint for this because yellow paints can be a bit of a pain to work with. Instead, I mixed together some corn red that I already had on the palette and a little bit of green. While I had the black out from the hazard stripes, I also filled in and neatened up any areas on the Necron. This cable didn't seem to look right rusty, so I filled that in black as well. I mixed together black and a little bit of white to create a greyer tone that I'm putting on the areas of the Necron that are facing towards the light more. I'm not going for non-metallic metal here, I haven't quite progressed to that level with my painting. I just want a bit more of a gradient from the darker points to the lightest. Eyebrow of concentration! With edge highlights it can be quite tricky figuring out where the light would be hitting. Fortunately with glossy blacks you can sort of use the reflections of natural light to tell you where those points would be. As a final highlight on that grey I'm using Stormhost Silver just on the very tips of those brightest points. This is quite a white bright metallic so it pops quite nicely. One of the most important things for me with edge highlighting is the amount of paint I have on the brush. You're covering such fine area on the model that you do not need a lot at all. In the middle of the flayed one's one eye, I put a little bit of Troll Slayer Orange as a highlight. And I intended to do the same on the Servo Skull, but it just ended up being orange. Finishing touches now, I worked around the model's base, filling in any areas which had rubbed off or needed a slight highlight with a dry brush. It's finally time to marry the two with the holiest of holy super glues. I put a little drop in the back where his back foot is, and then adjusted him so his front foot was just on the rim of the paint pot. tiny amount of super glue there just to hold him in place and I let it set. Now just need some foliage to break up the base a bit. A small dab of super glue on each one and strategically place your graph tuss tough grass grass. And there he is, our paint pot flayed one in all of his glory.
Thank you for watching my madness. Please subscribe and I'll see you next time.